Hello, do you hear me? No? So um, it's the idea of thinking uh, inside, outside the box started with this puzzle. You may know it. Connect the dots by drawing four straight continuous lines that pass through each of the nine dots. And now we're lifting the pencil from the paper. Most people uh, start doing it something like this and can never do it. But the big idea is that people usually think that the solution fits inside the box. And in reality, the solution is outside the box. So the idea, Wikipedia told me, <laughs> I don't know, that it all started with this puzzle. So um, my next puzzle is the following. What is the smallest number of squares needed to be drawn to make sure that each dot is in its own region? So most people that try to do this do something like this and give the answer four. So what's the outside the box idea? Anyone? Yes, uh, you're brilliant. Someone's showing that the outside the box idea, the squares don't have to be parallel to the grid lines and we can make it three. Okay, let's try another one. So in the equation below, move one digit to make it correct. When people try to do it, they couldn't find a solution. What's the outside the box idea? Anyone? Exponent. Exponent, exponent. you're brilliant. Okay, uh, we do the exponent and then it works. Okay, let's try one more. So a certain hopper can turn any four cigarette parts into a single cigarette. Today, he has found 24 cigarette parts on the street. How many cigarettes maximum will he smoke today? So if you do it, take 24, divide by four, six cigarettes. What is the outside the box idea? Uh, I didn't hear all of you, but there was some brilliant ideas to reuse the cigarettes. So after smoking six cigarettes, he will have six butts left. So we can reuse them and use four of them to have another cigarette. He will smoke seven. But actually, there is another outside the box idea. Yes, you're brilliant. Another idea is to borrow a cigarette. He has three butts left. He borrows a butt, smokes a cigarette, and returns the butt. So I'm thinking, if, I, if I'm ever uh, in a tricky situation, I need a lawyer, I will use this puzzle and ask them to solve it to find my lawyer. And I usually, like this outside the box puzzles, I'm usually very good at this. I find that people who can solve them are brilliant, but, um, Every time, the problem is, every time I solve this puzzle, I think, aha, uh -huh, this is the intended answer, I'm sure about it, and I stop thinking about this puzzle anymore. So my students taught me a lesson. So let's, I, I was planning to talk about, actually, my students. So let's try another puzzle. Two boys wish to cross a river, but there is a single boat that can take only one boy at a time. The boat cannot return on its own. There are no ropes or similar tricks, yet boys manage to cross the river. How? What's the outside the box idea? I don't hear you well. One swims. One swims. One swims. One holds on to the boat. Walk over the bridge. Yeah, I actually don't hear that. So the standard solution is that they started on different sides of the river. So this is the intended solution. But as you see, there are many other ideas, and this is what my students taught me, that it's actually, there are some other ideas. So there was another person on the other side of the river who brought the boat back. The boys can swim, and my favorite, they just wanted to cross the river and come back, so they did it in turns. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So guys, I, had, I, I don't hear you all at the same time, so come back to me. I'm collecting all these ideas. I will write about this on my blog and on, in my paper that I plan to contribute to as an exchange. So we have one more puzzle. You have a basket containing five apples. You have 500 friends. You give each of your friends uh, one apple. After the distribution, each of your friends has one apple each, yet there is an apple remaining in the basket. How can it be? So what's the outside the box idea? The the six apples. So give an apple to a friend together with a basket. This is a standard solution. So my students found many other ideas. Kill one of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this guy is in the seventh grade. <laughs> you can't count. <laughs> uh, you are narcissistic and you are one of your own friends. <laughs> You have two baskets, one has five apples, one has one apple. One friend already has an apple. Yeah. An extra apple falls from a tree to the basket. <laughs> and my favorite is, the basket is your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they taught me a lot, my students, so I usually, oh, let me give you a, sort of, this is another example I cannot miss. It's not about thinking outside the box, it's about my students. So it's a standard question, what happens if an irresistible cannonball hits an immovable post? It's a question from Ryman Smalian book, I forgot which one. But the standard answer is that this, the given conditions are contradictory and the two objects cannot exist at the same time. So, my students, ta -da. the post falls in love with the cannonball as it is so irresistible. <laughs> <laughs> so, the lesson they taught me, with conclusion, I am good at thinking outside the box. I always find the intended answer but I just realized that I'm inside the bigger box. <laughs> and maybe I'm not the only one. Thank you. <laughs>